All right, this video is going to get you ready for the stoichiometry lab that we're going to do very soon. Um, we're going to run through a few things on the lab that you need to know about, and then we're going to do some practice calculations, a practice data table that will get you ready for this lab. So if you take a look here on the right side, we have the actual lab write-up that you're going to get um, on paper that uh, you'll have your own copy for you and your partner. It's also linked to this page on Canvas. Uh, a few things to, to notice here. The mass, it's not 20 to 25 grams of lead nitrate. It's actually 0.20 to 0 0.25 grams. So that's a, a nice uh, thing to look at. When we look at that, we don't want to put too much of the, um, of, the, of the reactant in the beaker. You're going to dissolve that. It points that out. The other thing is the other solution you don't have to measure out. It's already dissolved for you in a dropper bottle. And that's the NAI, and it's shown right, shown right here. You're going to take both those solutions, the one that you'll make and the one that's already made, and mix those, and it'll tell you how to do that here. Um, you're going to filter it. There's a special way to fold the filter that's shown here. We also have a video I'd like you to look at that's linked on this Canvas page. Take a look at that. You're going to take that beaker then, and you're going to get every drop into that filter paper that's in the funnel right there. You don't want your gravy to be going down the drain later, so make sure you get as much as you can into that filter paper um, by using a stirring rod just like they're showing here. Also, when we, the lab period starts on day one, you want to get going right away. Um, that, that means you want to read through this before the lab starts and um, the, the day of the lab. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing. That way you can hit the ground running. It is a two-day lab, which means the first day you're going to do a lot of work. The second day, you are going to get your uh, filter paper and do some calculations. Those calculations are pretty important, so we're going to do a practice run to start off. So this is the actual... Um, equation that we're doing in the lab, um, this is the one we're going to practice today. So again, the hope is that by doing this one as a practice run, and I'm going to give you data that uh, we have from a lab that was done, and putting it in a data table, you'll get really good and be able to do this um, when the time comes. So go ahead and make this data table right here. Uh, go ahead and pause this video and on a piece of paper, notebook paper, just make this data table just like this. So let's kind of look at what we got going on in the real lab and apply it to the kind of uh, practice lab here. So we'll go ahead and use the exact same mass here, 0 0.2, not 20, but 0 0.2 grams of barium nitrate. We're going to we're going to use that as our mass. Go ahead and go to your data table that you just made and write that down. 0 0.2 um, grams of barium nitrate, 0 0.20 grams of barium nitrate. Put that in the data table. Also, as the lab points out over here, it is important to have a, uh, the mass of a dry uh, filter paper. And um, the mass we're going to use for that, again, write this down. All the things you need to write down are in red font here. Write that down on your data table, 0 0.56, and I forgot to put grams, but you can do that. Put 0 0.56 grams as the mass of the filter. So the filtering happens. Um, we do all that. The uh, drying happens overnight in an oven or in the weekend, over the weekend, excuse me, and we're ready to go. We take that dry filter um, and we find that the, the mass of the barium sulfate plus the filter, go to your data table, write that down, 0 0.71 grams is what we got as our mass. Record that. Now remember, at this point, you can infer the mass of the barium sulfate. The next thing on the data table is mass of barium sulfate, so check that out. And you're going to want to subtract the filter paper mass from the mass of the barium sulfate plus the filter paper when it was dry. Go ahead and calculate that now. If you need to pause, you can. The next thing on the data table is a theoretical yield. What is a theoretical yield? This is sort of a new concept. First, let's go ahead and look at the reference, or excuse me, let's reference the balanced chemical equation that will be given to you on the lab. So I'll give it to you here in the practice lab. And something that should stick out here is that it is a double um, replacement reaction. That means we should check the reactant's solubility. I did that. Remember the 
um, solubility table that tells you if it's S for soluble or I for insoluble, and there's some other letters there that kind of point you to the fact that it's insoluble. And what we find here with barium sulfate is that it is insoluble, and that will be our precipitate, and that is what we're going to see when we mix these two um, solutions together. Sodium nitrate, sodium being a family one, is going to be soluble, so we don't have to worry about that. So this is our solid. So now we're going to look at some relationships, and this is what we've been practicing and we're pretty good at. So if you look at barium nitrate over here, and we look at barium sulfate over here, this is the precipitate, okay? This is, um, this is the um, solution that we made and we know the exact mass of. So we're gonna say, okay, if we know how much, how many grams we put in here, then can you tell me how many grams of the barium sulfate should we have made? And we can do that because all we have to do is take those that number, 0 0.20 grams, and use a simple grams of A, where A would be barium nitrate. So A, grams of A to moles to A, and we do that using the periodic table. And then moles of A to moles to B, we could do, where B, of course, would be barium sulfate. We'd use the balance equation coefficients. And then, again, use the periodic table to go back to grams of B. So we can do this, no problem, we've been practicing this. Go ahead and write this calculation down underneath your calculation, or excuse me, underneath your data table. Um, you're gonna need this later. So go ahead and pause if you want to. And what you see here is we took the 0 0.20 grams of barium nitrate and we simply calculated the molecular mass by looking at the periodic table and finding that the individual atomic masses of one barium, two nitrogens, and six oxygens, because the coefficients here, or the subscripts, excuse me. And we simply run that through. Right here, we're using a one-to-one -one ratio because if you go up here, there's nothing there, which means there's a one. There's nothing here, which means that's a one. Then again, use the periodic table, molecular mass, and we find out that we got 0 0.18 grams of barium sulfate, the product, okay? So that's what we got from the 0.2 that we put in. Um, that is our theoretical yield, which means that that's what we should have got in a, I guess you'd say, perfect world. Go ahead and record that on your data table also. So 0 0.18 grams as your theoretical. The last thing you need to do now is calculate the percent yield, and I'm going to let you do that because in order to calculate the percent yield, which is the last thing on the data table, again, is to take the mass of the barium sulfate, which is on your data table, and then divide that by the theoretical mass, which we just calculated also. Then you're going to multiply by 100, and you have a percent yield um, for you to look at. Uh, write that down. Um, you're going to want to check out the rest of the page on Canvas to find out what you need to get ready for this lab.